Hi and welcome to Why do social scientists reject biologically based explanations? Let's start with a quote from Simon Baron Cohen, professor of developmental psychopathology at Cambridge University in England. What worries me is that the debate about gender differences still seems to polarize nature versus nurture, with some in the social sciences and humanities wanting to assert that biology plays no role at all, apparently unaware of scientific evidence to the contrary. As will be argued in this video, it is not because social scientists in general do not know about the contradictory scientific results Baron Cohen refers to, but rather because they reject them. But exactly what does this controversy consist of, and equally important? Where does it come from? The controversy is briefly outlined in the following conversation between Professor of Psychology, David Buss, University of Texas at Austin in the U.S., and evolutionary biologist, Richard Dawkins, Oxford University in England. David, I recall a conversation with a very distinguished philosopher whom I like immensely, extremely intelligent man, and he kind of was happy to talk about all the things I like, selfish genes, sociobiology and things. But when evolutionary psychology was mentioned, he started kind of frothing at the mouth. And this is a terribly common reaction, and I'm sure you meet it too. What's going on there, do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, I think a lot of things are going on. Um, I mean, evolutionary psychology is one of these uh, equal opportunity offenders. Uh, I think that one aspect of it is that people like to think that there is a, a wall between uh, evolutionary theory as it applies to non-human organisms and as it applies to humans and people don't want to cross that wall they like to think that when it comes to humans other things and uh, learning culture consciousness yes. so these are not you know. people who object to evolution itself I mean we're not talking creationists here we're talking sociologists yes. um, social scientists of one sort or another yeah. philosophers uh, who accept that humans have evolved but do they think it's a kind of insult to human dignity or, or something? Uh, yes, well, there's a peculiar belief, um, at least within the social sciences, that, that when it comes to humans, there was uh, an erasure of uh, adaptations and instincts. That, you know, there was this, you know, that instincts, adaptations uh, occur in other animals, but when it comes to humans, these, be these have been replaced by uh, blank slate, uh, rationality, or domain general learning mechanisms so that the assumption, the implicit assumption, is that humans start out life uh, in essence with the blank slate and that all the content of human character and behavior is put in there through socialization, through culture, uh, poured in there during the lifetime of an individual. Uh, but I think it's the objections, uh, there are a variety of other sorts of objections. So you get uh, uh, political objections or ideological objections that come both from uh, the right and the left. But why do social scientists assume there was an erasure of adaptation and instinct when it comes to humans? And what are the political objections to a biological basis of human behavior? To answer these questions we first turn to Gad Saad, evolutionary behavioral scientist at the John Molson School of Business, Concordia University, Montreal, Canada. In this clip he explains to gender issues activist and vlogger, Karen Strong, what some of the reasons for rejecting biologically based explanations in the social sciences are. One of the reasons why social scientists, uh, you know, abdicated this idea of biology is because they saw that so many Cretans misused evolutionary theory, right? So going back to the social class elitists of the British system, you know, the social Darwinists, which of course has nothing to do with Darwin, they say, hey, you know, there's a struggle between the classes and we're the upper class. And if the lower classes lose out and die out and don't get access to education and don't get health care, hey, that's natural. That's Darwinian. Mm -hmm. uh, Eugenesis came along and said, hey, you know, there's a struggle between uh, different groups. Some are smart, some are not. Some are homosexual, some are heterosexual. Uh, why don't we ster sterilize uh, the folks who are undesirable so that they don't pollute the gene pool? Yeah. Um, the Nazis came along and said, hey, there's a struggle between races. We're the Aryan race. Screw the gypsies, the Jews, and the homosexuals. Hey, that's Darwinian. Darwin said this. And so because of all these reasons, it became very, very difficult to accept that biology could simply be an explanatory framework without looking at its negative consequences. And so they built these new edifices where biology was completely erased from the theoretical purview of social scientists. And myself and others 
have been trying very hard over the past 20 years to say, yes, of course, we're cultural animals. Of course, socialization matters. Nobody denies that. Of course, the environment matters. But to deny the fact that we're biological beings, as you said, it's going to lead to suboptimal explanations. Although Gadsad's explanation certainly has a lot of merit, it is only part of the story. As social psychologist and professor of ethical leadership, Jonathan Heights, New York University's Stern School of Business, explains in the next clip, the social sciences are so heavily politicized that biological explanations are rejected for political rather than scientific reasons, since such explanations conflict with sacralized political tenets. If you sacralize your, your political ideology's heroes, you cannot think straight. And this is where we are in the sciences. It's obvious that if you're, if you're a, 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 a social conservative, uh, 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 evangelical, young earther, creationist, you probably shouldn't be going into a PhD program in biology or geology, okay? It's just gonna be really hard for you to deal with reality if you deny evolution and the age of the earth, okay? Uh, you shouldn't go into American history if you say America is the greatest country on earth and it simply cannot have committed war crimes. We just don't do that. I mean, that's, that should be a disqualification. But what about on the left? Um, suppose, you, uh, suppose you had students coming in who deny that IQ matters. Uh, not anymore, but for decades. It's just very uncomfortable. Because there are race differences in IQ, the general view is IQ is a bad test. It doesn't measure and it doesn't matter. We can't allow that IQ matters. Uh, because IQ is heritable, we can't allow that heritability matters. Uh, environment has to be everything. Uh, the left has always believed that environment can overcome everything else. So uh, can you do social science if you deny heritability, you think everything is environment when it isn't. Um, the left is full of sex difference deniers. Uh, hormones are fine for other animals. Hormones affect behavior in other animals. But how sexist of you to suggest that male and female differences could in any way be due to the fact that they are exposed to different hormones prenatally. That just is ruled out of bounds. Now, it's not that the left denies evolution. That's fine for other animals. But evolutionary psychology? Well, that's almost sexist and racist. No, evolution didn't shape human beings. Um, and last, the biggest area in my field is the study of stereotypes and prejudice. Um, and we're trying, it's an important social problem, but we try to solve it while not allowing anybody to even mention the largest cause of stereotypes and prejudice. There is a small research literature showing that the reason why people hold stereotypes is because they're accurate. Most stereotypes do correspond to some measurable, observable fact about the environment. Now, there are often misinterpretations. The stereotype often lingers long after the reality changes. So I'm not saying that stereotypes are perfectly accurate. But I'm saying a big part of the story is that people are really good at detecting differences between groups. We're intuitive Bayesians. We pick up frequencies. We, you can't stop the brain from doing this. So suppose you had a whole group of people coming into social psychology who were the equivalent of young Earth creationists who say, I'm going to study stereotyping and prejudice but I'm going to just rule in advance that there are no differences between groups. And now I'm going to study what's left. That's where we are. Social scientists who for purely political reasons reject scientific evidence from other disciplines, such as genetics and biology, effectively demote themselves from scientists to political social fiction authors. Any social scientist doing this will of course deny that they're being political rather than scientific, in spite of overwhelming evidence to the contrary. As professor of psychology at Harvard University, Steven Pinker, once correctly remarked, the truth cannot be sexist, and nor can it be racist, transphobic, homophobic, misandric or misogynistic. There are no illegitimate scientific inquiries, there is just scientific inquiry in the pursuit of truth, even though we may never reach it.